What is up, Box Cutters players? My name is Driver3Joe, and what you're about to hear is the town hall we held at Rocket Snail on Discord Critters, discord.me slash boxcritters. Link is in the description. Go ahead and join it. But uh, we had Rocket Snail on, everybody else in the community on. Um, we just talked about membership, you know, asked him some questions. Uh, everybody got together, uh, gave him some ideas, and seeing, you know, what he wanted to do, you know, um, membership-wise, payment why you know, for any type of currency, um, a lot of questions were answered in here, um, so I'm going to get to that now. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Thank you so much. We will see you uh, at the end of the video. <laughs> All right, guys. Enjoy. I know we got some comments in Town Hall here. Hey, I got a pretty um, good, there's a pretty um, long one from Dan here. I probably should read. He wants to get yeah, go convey ahead. to Rockets now. Okay. Uh, so, here's what it says. As someone who's been playing Virtual World since 2002, I believe that a membership system where a user pays a set amount each month is outdated due to the constant flow of content we can now get online. Back in time where membership was an effective method of making profit, we didn't have that much content online. Now we can play many online virtual worlds for free, such as Club Penguin Rewritten, Toontown Rewritten. More importantly, we have social media, and I can refresh my phone every minute and get new content for free. I agree that the box creators team needs to profit from box creators. Of course they do. It's a business and they need paying. Maybe certain premium critters could be available in a DLC similar to how the Snow Blaster set worked on Epic Snails. I would personally hate for box creators to have a membership system. It causes division between elitist members and non-members whose parents can't afford for them to keep paying every month on online games. It's a new era of online games. Let's improve from last time. No plans to make uh, box curse pay to play, uh, though. Just to give everybody a little wake up, it's the English nations, Australia, Canada, United States, and the UK are the only ones actually that are against pay to play. Uh, <laughs> most of the rest of the world, which is now more than fifty percent of the gaming population, only want pay to play. <laughs> So you're you're yeah. going to be expecting a lot more changes in your coming future in your game. Currently with boxers, though, no plans to do pay for pay to play. I, I'm going to break your guys' bubble a little bit. Um, <laughs> just so you guys, you don't know what... Well, as you guys learn more and more about the video game industry, I shouldn't say you don't know. You might know. Um, you might surprise you that Fortnite's numbers and even Club Penguin's numbers were targeted to the dollar value per country. So what do you okay. mean? We actually use a, a, a an online directory called the bread index. A bread index oh, yeah. is, is what is the cost to buy bread or a coffee in each country? We then take that price and build our video game prices on it. So Fortnite actually costs less in some countries and more in other countries. And wow. to our UK players Club Penguin actually had a larger subscription than the American players. Well, what the yeah. I want to know Australian stats. <laughs> but like, how, for, in some ways, the Fortnite's much. extremely broken because, like, even though you're both in the UK on mobile, it costs ten pounds for say one thousand V bucks. Yet on console, on console, it costs eight pound. Yes, and a player in Brazil would cost probably two pounds. Oh yeah, yeah Neon stated that it's gonna cost more in Iceland. How I was so, thinking this might work um, is just really just hard. I just wanted to break that you, you saying a price tag is always tested. We don't we don't pick a price. We figure out what country can afford. So yeah. don't worry about that. You'll 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 be fine if you buy a soda pop or soda in UK and it costs you two pounds or whatever it costs over there right now everybody bases it so club penguin was actually based on the idea of how much would a netflix subscription cost how much does a ds game cost for six months Oof. how much did a console game cost for one year that was actually the three prices wow so that wow. When a, so when a child no, walked up netflix hasn't existed yet so when a child talked to their mother or father they could place the same argument. They could say, well, if I had a one-year Club Penguin membership, it's the same as you buying me one console game. 
<laughs> well, I have a question <laughs> here. Game. That could explain what? why it costs sixty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> what percent? Um, what percent of Club Penguin users would you say statistically had a membership versus no membership? I'm just curious. Which um, year, though? Less than, all of them, just all together. Le- yeah. Less than four percent of all players had a membership. Wow, less I was than one of them. Wow. Yes. Interesting. Oh my God. <clears throat> well, if you kind of think about it, the internet was new. Since... I mean, even my parents were against the membership system because we had no idea where our bank details were going through. Your members, though, retained longer, though. So the number okay. does skew. You take the overall player base, which is past 300 million. If you take how many of them become subscribers, which was an average of about 4%, which is the industry average, by the way. Actually, it, yeah, back it up. You're a successful video game if you can do more than 1%. Wow. Okay. You should be building your business model on 1%. Um, um. <clears throat> but Penguin was leading the way. There were other virtual worlds and MMOs actually doing 6 to 8%. Wow. Um, I mean, is, is the new age battle passes like a monthly thing so people this is work where for? this is where i want to discuss with everyone on the phone here as a game designer the irony of all these conversations is where it's actually the exact same thing every single one of them is the same thing pay to win is just an arcade machine dropping in quarters yeah <laughs> it, it's just you, you well any game from voodoo is an arcade machine you die you put in another quarter <laughs> oh, that's all it is that's all they are Subscription is just a battle pass. A battle pass is just a set amount of time that you prepay versus get it taken out of automatically. That if you like it again, you want the second pass, you pay again. It's a subscription. Yeah. But, but what I like about Fortnite, though, with like the whole battle pass thing, is it's not like other like older virtual worlds where you'd pay for the membership and everything you, would be available from there. With like the battle pass, you do have to play and you do have to work. To get all I the do items. like that. I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> you uh, can also buy your battle pass at the end of the season and you get all the you items. You can, but it costs yep. like 50 quid. And not many yep. people want to do that. Uh, you'd um, be actually surprised. Really? <laughs> 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 um, for those of you who aren't on the voice chat, well, your mic's muted. Um, please type in the town hall chat. I'll have Lance check that. I'm not sure if he's watching it. But, uh, I'm we want to know your opinion. Yeah, we want to know your opinions on prices too. I mean, is five to ten bucks a decent range? Is that something yes. that's yes? Okay. Yeah. Five. We usually test it. We get it tested out. Um, so if you guys are playing our hyper hippo games like Adventure Capitalist and things, you'd be surprised. Wait a minute! I've only just oh, made the click. <laughs> I've only just made the link that was made by. Oh my god! Hey, can you let Lance talk, please? You okay. Just interrupted him. Um. <laughs> You'd be surprised. A lot of these games are uh, people are happy to spend twenty to fifty dollars per week on some of these games. <laughs> I'm wow. playing adventure oh. for free. I haven't played a I single step it. in it yet. But if you just um, go to some of the research, it's it's tiny percentages. You have to remember these were in the video game industry. We work we work in one, two, three percent of our audience actually pays. The majority does not. So this is where in Club Penguin it was always a struggle. You create this membership system and really a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of people actually were members. Um, And then interestingly, the backlash, the overwhelming voice was members have all these extra treatments and stuff. And we we were sitting there going, what's actually the tiniest, smallest audience we could ever get? (laughs) <laughs> just a little sliver and yeah runescape all those guys work on the same model it's just a small percentage um eh, but the balance is how do we do it and everyone on the call here is talking about they like the Fortnite method i'd love to hear i just want to hear why do you like the Fortnite method what makes it exciting you say you get to play and still earn but you still get the so you have to remember, you're paying for a membership to unlock member items, essentially. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think that's the whole thing about it is, is they can look forward to working with friends. Hey, do you want to get on this Saturday and 
grind out for a little bit and unlock some new stuff, level up um, yeah. type of feel, I guess. All right, so <clears throat> we'll read some questions from the people who aren't connected and want um, you to get an answer. We'll just convey the message, but um, uh, let's see here. I saw a question. And Lance charges to be his buddy. I've thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is opinion on the Fortnite method. I know you asked about that before. Uh, Trap says, Fortnite method makes it so that all the past items in that battle pass never return, which makes items rare and gives incentive to buy it slash play so you don't miss out on any items. Hmm. Okay. That's pretty cool. And I love the Tweety Bird, whoever's got Tweety Bird out there. <laughs> That's awesome. Probably I think. Uh, I'm so on Diamond what I'm the very, Woods. What I'm curious about what I'm mesmerized by it is, is, as a game designer, we look at the industry going, Fortnite is essentially a, a DLC that you earn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you prepay a risk to see if you can get the items. Now, is that the thrill, though? Is that what people are looking for? That's the love, question. I'd love to hear it. So I might, I, might, I might be talking too deep here. But we, of course, in the game industry, we talk at this level of, of psychological things going on. We talk about, you have to understand, the transfer of money has to be exchanged for value. So somehow Fortnite has created value that you're, it's worth you buying. And that's the magic. <clears throat> that's the magic. <laughs> so what, I think, I mean, it's working. <laughs> what do you value? What, well, it'll work for anyone. If you can create value, you can create income. So what do you guys see in Fortnite then? Let's talk about Fortnite. That was value. What, why is it valuable? I, I think people <laughs> just don't want to miss items. Um, I, I, that's the biggest thing. I, I think just the, the aspect of ha having limited or exclusive stuff is – what it's all about honestly as many people that'll disagree with me I, I that's the reason you all got on like that's why you guys get on you know what i mean you get on to get the new items that's that's i don't know that's just the truth and uh i think that has a lot to do with it and i mean you know there's some people disagreeing but in r honesty what is five or ten bucks a month to to unlock cool stuff and i and i think the fortnite aspect the push of uh having to work for it still, not just getting it and having access to everything. I think you should still have to work for it in some aspect. Um, that would keep people active and entertained. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, the curious thing here, I'm going to give you guys actually a problem we had with Club Penguin. Um, there was a very large user base because uh, decorating your igloo was member only. Um I don't know if you guys probably knew this, or some of you players were this. I would hear you, want to hear your frustrations. You had to become a member to decorate your igloo, but that there was a builder player base that only wanted to decorate and role play that never grinded. They never played a single mini game, so they couldn't earn any coins to buy the uh, furniture to decorate their own igloo. What? Interestingly, happened on our servers as we reach out to these people, and you get that what we called the the 10 p.m. mummy brigade, <laughs> all these parents would log in and earn their kids' coins for the next morning. Wow. We, we, would, we would ask them and the play pattern would change. And only grind... <laughs> and grind only coins. Correct. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. So oh, oh. we oh. actually always wondered if should it have not been membership and should have we just sold coins? So what do you guys think of that? Um, oh, there's man. actually a very good idea by uh, Dan in the chat. He said, how about you add two currencies? One is easy to obtain whilst the other is uh, hard to earn, still obtainable by all players. So his idea <laughs> is you can buy, so there's two currencies. One is easy to obtain by quest, and one is a bit harder to obtain. So you can, the one which is harder to obtain, you can buy with real money, but normal players can also obtain them 
they uh, dedicate like a lot of hard work. So for example, every 10 levels, you get a bit of that currency, but you can also buy it with real money. I, so I, I think I think you missed the question. <laughs> Half the player base do not play games. They actually will At not all. grind. They will not grind. So they'd rather so, buy it is so, what he's saying. So skill does not matter. So your Fortnite player is all about skill. You'd be amazed that we, we would watch people. There would be people that would get a membership and only play Karjitsu. There were people that got a membership and only decorated their igloo. And that's it. <laughs> there were people that went and just grinded games. And there were people that went out and just got every single item and never, ever bought a piece of furniture for their igloo. Wow. So you have to build for each group. So a single membership system doesn't always work. In a, yeah. in a builder case, you're talking about grinding and moving through. That user is never going to do it. Okay, so a monthly pass plus plus being able to purchase currency is what you're thinking. Uh, pff, I don't know. I, I just because I <clears> see a couple of people in the the town hall talking here that actually can relate. They were like part of the group where their parents actually dropped them coins and earn stuff and. Um, uh, some people are saying they prefer membership to buying currency. Fair enough. Uh, interestingly, almost every one of your mobile games today is a currency purchasing system. Sure does. If you, th if you think about anything in the Candy Crush category through casual gaming, through anything Supercell, they're all coin buyers. In, um, in Fortnite, the way you buy the membership is through their currency, though. Correct. So I wouldn't... <laughs> so I mean... You could all you could have something similar where you buy a currency, and then with that currency, you can also buy a membership. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I wanted to just make sure that the uh, I know you're very vocal on it should be earned and There's played and skilled, but there is a large group that doesn't do that. So we got to so, count for everybody. And that's the that's struggle. The question. Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> so. And that's my, I'm leaning on if uh, just the through people's stories here. I'm really fascinated that, yes, there were players here that had parents grind for them. That's crazy. Um, it was super common, actually. I never thought about that. Uh, when we met with the Toontown team at Disney, Toontown was very popular. Uh, it, it's actually interesting. They, the game kept going. I don't know if you guys knew how long Toontown was older than Club Penguin. And it kept going on and on and on. And their, their major players were all over the age of 40. Wow. Um, and it was because the kids grew up and stopped playing. But the mums actually loved Toontown and wouldn't stop playing. That is hilarious. So they actually ran most of the fan groups and kept playing and had their social communities because they were the coin grinders for their kids while they were young. And I'm just reading someone's co comment here. Cartograph. Um, main gripe, gripe about buying currency as opposed to membership is it feels like being cheated. I'm curious to hear more about uh, the cheating. Is that just bad game design or you just felt like you bought a bunch? Is that just buyer's remorse? <laughs> um, I know of, you can go Google. Um, I don't know if you got any uh, World of Tank players on the call here. Um, go Google it. You'd be, it. you'd be blown away that the you buy your tanks and stuff so it's actually closer to a it's pay to win but you can't win so you just <laughs> you pay to be in a higher tier but the game is balanced that you're always got an equal combatant um but people are dropping people will drop up to a thousand dollars a month on world of tanks wow isn't that so, like clash of plants uh world of tanks is the big steam <clears throat> desktop big tank battling game well, uh, very what's, large MMO. <laughs> you're a venture capitalist i haven't played it too much um what what worked out as far as purchasing on that game um what, what do you see is the main as... so it's a single player game so you're not actually ever you, I, i'm blown away when i get a message that says people are saying you shouldn't be allowed to we sell accelerators. So the game's all about time. How long, much time do you want to spend to grow your empire? And, event, right. and Supercell, that's all they ask. Clash of Clans is all about time. They, you push a button and you wait for your troops. And it tells you, you know, 
two days. You just pay the money and you skip the clock, right? Uh, so technically, those are all pay to win, but they have no impact to the game. You just went faster. And sadly, most of the time you fall on your face because you're not skilled enough at that level to play it. <laughs> um, so venture capitalists, you just pay to go faster. So people have this completion feeling. They want to get their they're late at night. They've been tapping away. They're growing their empire. And they're like, nah. And it says, you know, it's going to take two more hours. Like, forget that. Click the button. Boom. Skip. Because they just want to get to the next level. And there's a lot of people that just want that feeling. Just click, boom, skip. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that Nintendo is actually working on a, a... They have a patent right now on an autoplay game. So if you just click it, it'll solve Zelda for you. You just watch it. <laughs> so, some people are building these styles of games right now. And people are paying for it. Which is absolutely amazing. Um, does it just ruin the fun of the game because you're just watching It depends on what unfold. you think is fun. Well, if you look at the advent of Twitch and YouTube streaming right now, there's actually more people watching people play games than there are people playing games. What is your definition of fun? So that, that, and the same thing in what happened, like I shared with you in Club Penguin. We had a large group that their fun was just decorating their igloo. They never left their igloo. They wouldn't even go to the town, visit. They just decorate their igloos. Log in, decorate their igloo, log out. <laughs> That's the best thing. That's their fun. <laughs> That's really the early Minecraft, really, for them. Customization. So... This is the, the joy of the decisions I have to make as a designer. I have to go, wow, of this group of people, this group loves this pattern, or this group loves this pattern, or this group only wants to get to the black belt in kart jitsu. They're absolutely obsessed with it. <laughs> okay. Um, so. I think the best way to figure this out is to first figure out what will be the official features of box critters first? Because like you said, Club Penguin has a bunch of things going on, hence why you had to figure out how to accommodate for that. In box critters, we barely even know what's going on. <laughs> so I'm guessing the best way to start before figure out how we're paying people is figure out what we're going to be charging them for or so, why are we going to give them. So what would be, what would be like the main... So that's the point. This is why this is experiments right now. A uh, great question. I'm reading some of these people's questions here as well in the feed. Um, right now, I'm just experimenting. So the goal here is to build out each of the core technologies. These are just core technologies, not features. Like, can you chat? Can you move? Can you connect rooms? Can you layer in? Can we? Next ones are like load a mini game. Just load a mini game, not play. Yeah. Can it appear on screen and everybody sees it and nobody's computer crashes? <laughs> that's the first goal once we move to closer to about fall now you're going to start seeing the whole package so now it's going to be what you felt in Club Penguin or RuneScape or something like that where now you have full questing, full systems full features coming together but between now and then this is where I'm in a discovery phase of watching your. I'm watching your player patterns I don't I, I listen to your comments here, but the uh, reality is I look at the data. And the data shows, according to what everything Boxer is doing, every time there's that free item, <laughs> yep. 20,000 of you log in and go grab it. <laughs> wow. And then you never show up again. You actually do not play. <laughs> That's because there's nothing else to do. But agreed. Yay. So that's why I'm adding more things to do. But I'm, what, how it works in experiments is you test that. So what I'm interested to see is, is as I add more things to do, do you do them? So interestingly in Club Penguin, they didn't. You'd be amazed by a group of people, like a large group of people, that only showed up for one day, the first day of every party every month and then never came back. The whole month. Is that when Club <laughs> Penguin missions like Operation Blackout ended up extending throughout the end of November? 
Largely. Largely, that's because of uh, the American Thanksgiving and holidays. Um, so it's a timing issue. But um, you, 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 there were a lot of players that would only play parties and never play the rest of the time. Because, like, I remember, if I remember correctly, um, there will be, like, parts like Operation Blackout where you need to, in, if you want to finish Operation Blackout, you have to play each week. And this has been a thing in 2011, 2012, 2013, I think some parts of 2009, is, where it's weekly based where you progress just so you play the party longer. But then again, people just log in every Thursday just to do that. Mm-hmm. No, it's, um, yeah, there were people that would do that. It is very interesting. I would like to ask the group here. I'm reading through the messages right now. Juke, Juke, Zook, pretty good comments here. Um, a lot of people talking about, like, uh, there's a comment here, Katie, about Neopets. Stop doing that because I just kept dropping money. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Um, what's this one? Fortnite Battle Pass similar to catalogs. I'm curious. Um, a lot of people have been asking about trading. So something that Club Penguin never had, and I, to my knowledge, if someone can help me, correct me. Does Fortnite have trading? Um, I don't believe is, that they it's do. Limited. It's limited. It's like a more like a not trading, but more like a gifting system. You pay for someone's item. Yeah. Do you pay for it? Okay, that was something I was thinking, actually, because that's actually the easiest transactional system to do. Uh, full trade is actually really hard. Like, I give you these three items, you give me two items. It actually goes back and forth too much, and it's high risk of exploit exploiting. A lot of exploiting because people can rip off <laughs> other people and, you know, try and make their own profit off of it on the Internet. Uh, yeah, what's curious, though, is... Um, I didn't know Fortnite was actually doing the straight currency system. I'm surprised they haven't tapped into... You can actually do... Uh, it's a growing trend in gaming right now. Um, Blockchain-based uh, virtual item trading. So okay. it's, it's coming. You're going to see more and more of it. It's not using the big... It's not Bitcoin or anything. It's just, can you authenticate the ownership of an item outside of the game mm. is what's happening. So people can start making deals on eBay and everything, right? Yeah. And it creates that security. But I am curious what people think of the the trading. Like, if you could, because if if trading is something people like, the whole entire box of your games can actually be monetized through trading. Everything else could be free. And all we would do is we would just, like I shared with you, a, a, a successful virtual world or MMO actually only makes money on one to two percent of its entire population. If all we did is make money off of trades then boom, I'm rocking. So the interesting part of trades is that that means we're absolutely going rare. So that means an item comes out and it doesn't come back. <laughs> yeah, like if there's trading and you would restrict certain items from like being able to be traded just to keep that rarity aspect, like you only allow certain items to be tradable. Yep, because then this solves the grinders and the, your, your group of people that make sure you log in all the time. Right. Because as long as you play and gain and earn, you never bought any of these items, right? Mm. Now they become that, rare. Would this mean that there might be a trade trading market? I know Steam have a whole trading market. Um, games like Counter Strike, you can buy skins for your um, weapons on this trade on this trading market, um, and maybe like a percentage go towards the game for every trade. Yes, that's the common model. It's actually, uh, I read everywhere between 10 to 20% of the developers take per trade. So there's a, a nice market there. Did I lose it? I hope I didn't disappear. Uh, no, I just thoughts on trading. If people got some Webkins had trading, that's cool. What did uh, Trap? I actually never played Webkins enough. What was the trading like? Let me know. Trading can be dangerous because you can lose everything to trolls. That is correct, Tracy. I'm very concerned about that. Yep. Um, somebody says, don't think membership could give you access to more stuff. I'm curious to that one because this one really haunts me because a lot of people are like, Club Penguin's membership was evil because it gave you access to more stuff. And then I hear exactly in this feed here, 
if you buy a battle pass, it's okay to get more stuff. <laughs> so what's the difference? <laughs> I, I haven't figured out what the difference is between those two. Uh, I'm curious as people talk about that. Um, because in my mind, they're the same thing. Actually, the battle pass costs more per month than the membership ever did. Um, I don't know if you guys broke it out. You can go make a spreadsheet. It's insane. You are actually paying, um, it's $7 US per dance in Fortnite. Jesus. <laughs> it's $14 an outfit in Fortnite. If you actually make a spreadsheet and break out per item what they're worth, hidden behind their currency exchange, that's how much you guys are usually paying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing everybody has to remember. You know, yeah, you want like this style, but you have to remember. You know, you talk about how Fortnite, but you got to remember how what the cost of Fortnite is for everything, and a lot of people probably won't be happy having to pay fifteen dollars to get a shirt or something. But currently, they don't know that they just spent fifteen because Fortnite's <laughs> using a Fortnite's using a common system where you buy their currency. Yes. Then they hide it in an earning system against strength which actually has a coin sink so it's sucking your coins over time to gain to a point because you have to remember there's consumables in a lot of these games then you figure out the total cost to the acquired earnings that you got at the end these are i i have these spreadsheets for most of the major games um you spend a lot more than you think <laughs> You just don't know it. <clears throat> you just don't always know it. I mean, Juke, you play Fortnite real heavy. How much money have you spent? It's the most amount of money I've spent on ever, ever, in any game ever. And, and I why? Really realize. Um, I'm just I'm just hooked to cosmetics, I guess. <laughs> you think that's it? You gonna do a therapy group session with the group here? You don't want to admit that you're closing <laughs> in on probably a hundred bucks, right? <laughs> Oh, he's got to be over 100. I'm personally over 100, and I don't even play it. Exactly. So I, I've, I've spent 10 on each season. I've paid for eight seasons, never mind the cosmetics that you pay for in the separate shop. There you go. Okay, now imagine adding the scenario of trading. Oh, man. That's a whole other story. Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to catch up to people's messages here. Um, it's, Joe, can I, you throw I, slow I, mode on? Fifteen seconds. No, it's okay. I, I can do oh, that. Okay. Yeah. I Let's just sadly won't be able seconds. to comment to everybody here. They're pretty good. We cannot wait for the eye patch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seven bucks for a dance. Yeah, that's what it is. Go punch it in. Figure it out. It might be. It might be four bucks. You have to remember it's all currencies. And like I shared at the beginning, they actually charge different per country. Different per oh. country. Yeah, like someone in Brazil, the, you have to, this. They call it the bread index. It's like what? How much you'd buy a cup of coffee for? A cup of coffee in Canada, United States, and UK is actually quite expensive. We, we we're willing to get suckered into like a what is the US like five dollar seven dollar cup. Yep. And here in Canada, it's a five seven dollar cup, which is interesting because it's our exchange is actually less. So. If you came across the border and you paid five in the U.S., you're actually paying three in Canada. <laughs> that's and that's the same thing. So Starbucks, of course, wants to operate in Brazil and stuff, but they'll charge like a $1, $2 cup for the exact same cup that you get in, in um, North America. It all has to do with what people earn and income and lifestyle and cost of living. So you just build your games based on what people can afford to pay. Um, Australia is similar to Canada, I believe. So, well, in Australia, it, we pay at least between one dollar to five, depending on where you're buying coffee. And with the exchange rate, so see the exchange rate is where it all blends away. <laughs> Back to this amazing, like buy a currency and then <laughs> don't know what you spent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm probably talking too deep to most of the people in the audience here, but welcome to the video game industry. If you want a deep dive yep. in monetization and mechanics, it is incredibly psychological. <laughs> a lot of work and experience. A lot of work. What is this? Yeah. Who's got a fish? Oh, I see. That's why you got birds. Yeah, he's out there no, fishing. I, I, 
I, I used a fish as bait. I caught a little fish, and then I put it on and used it as bait, and I caught a bass. So. And that's how you bank a video game. <laughs> uh, okay, so people are just chattering everywhere. Uh, just love to hear anyone that could just quickly share. The thing I'm really missing here is, guys, when we made Club Penguin, we, did, we didn't know what we were doing. Okay, it was 2005. It was before cloud computing. There was no subscription services. We were actually told we were fools because um, it wouldn't work. We didn't know how to do it. You have to remember at that time, barely anybody had PayPal. Nobody would type their credit card on a website. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and there was no services. Um, what I want to know is, for those that played Club Penguin, if you can remember as a child, what was it like when you saw that membership wall? Did you say, I, did you understand it? Did you truly, you just wanted it? You wanted it on a bad did, did you want it really bad? Did you like for what, me? Like, did you have um, to tell your parents? Like, yeah, how did it work? I'll give you a point of view when you're living in a third world country, because mm -hmm. um, when I first saw the membership wall, I was like, oh, so I can't buy clothes, I can't decorate my igloo, and I tried to convince my parents, but we were living in a third world country, and they're like, we cannot afford this, or it's unsafe and risky. But eventually, we did, we did get membership, but we only get it for like one month, and it's only like once a year for membership. It was that short, but it, we tried to. But the thing is, is that when you're living in a third world country with membership, you have we have to make value of it. We have to use it as much as we can because there's no way we're getting that back again because we see it as a luxury. But when the yeah. membership ended. It was kind of disappointing to see it go away because you won't be, because we are unable to um, <clears throat> use our stuff again. But I was sort of happy that I was able to wear the pink snowsuit, even if the membership ended. But I knew that if I had if I wear something else, I won't be able to put it back on again. Hmm. But the membership wall was somewhat disappointing. But in the years two thousand seven to two thousand nine, it wasn't as bad comparing it to 2011 to 2013 where almost everything was membership locked i mean Correct. i think it was you log on there's a guy with a blue sports jersey it's 2006 where'd he get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like you, it's uh, it's like a demand i mean it's uh i, I don't know <clears throat> it's a demand i guess people want it that yeah like you said i mean all right not everyone on the game realizes it um, like you said, you got some of you are younger, but he just said twenty thousand people log in for items because why? Why? Because they want it. That, that's that's the answer. <laughs> you want it. Yeah, yeah and you haven't missed it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the. This is the. So as a game designer, these are the business things we research. I look for the the re. We have a we chart you, and it goes boom. You don't miss it. You're not even waiting. Like it's like, oh well, it'll be there for seven days. I'll wait four days. No, you wait till midnight. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Which, of course, in a, in a business world, it goes that equals value. You just spent your time. You planned and scheduled to do that. So I have to look at that and go, okay, now I see where your value system is. <laughs> it was very curious. Um, so just catching up on people. Yeah, the Puffles was a dark and sinister plot, but anyway. Dark and sinister <laughs> plot. Oh, come on. Everybody here should be a little bit older. Like, break it down as a business. Here, have a pet. Feed it. Here, your membership ended. We take your pet away. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> It's How could quite... you do this to us? Actually, I think you could keep the puffles for a period of time after membership expired. You, you did. Um... Wait, wait. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, but it made you feel. The bad. pets get taken away if your membership ends. They were well. The furniture was all put into storage. We called it. But I think your puffles stayed in your igloo. I couldn't remember exactly if the puffles were paused or they stayed in. But um. Yeah, that's that's uh, that was a little dark. There was a there was a lot of very very tearful emails our support teams got. Because 
I don't remember that. <laughs> I remember when the membership ended, I would still see my puffles there. I just remember I just cannot walk them or something. Yeah, it's true. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, it's a little dark sides of the video game industry. <laughs> Uh, do you, yeah, I'm assuming everybody was, um, yeah, so everybody collected items, everybody did the stuff. Uh, there's a couple of people that actually said they had the mummy grinders because you have to remember here what I'm curious about. What, so my question was, is how did you as a child convince your parents to spend money? Cause <laughs> what? We missed, by the way, you can go to RuneScape. They have another, I think it's RuneScape. It's either Wizard 101, RuneScape, or one of those guys. Love Wizard 101. The, the parents have another page, by the way, where they can just buy coin. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of these services offer additional services to the parental account. I remember just making a PowerPoint presentation convincing my dad why I need Club Penguin membership. PowerPoint. Okay. I am not joking. Is. I still have the PowerPoint. It's just a simple PowerPoint saying why I want Club Penguin. I'm like, my grades are good. I do my homework and chores. It's just six dollars. Oh, can you post that on your social media? Um, I don't think oh, you. I don't think you would. I don't think you guys know how much the Walt Disney Company spent to try to figure out why people spent money. <laughs> I will be happy to share you that PowerPoint if I could find it. Okay. Uh, let me see here if so there's other people chatting. We start around 2000. Change. I only have 10. Okay, so these are the puffle questions. Um, I'm sorry, people. I missed if you guys commented about um, how you talk to your parents and stuff. I was older when I started, like 11, 12. This is Katie. But I can imagine it being very confusing for a six to seven year old. Yeah, that is very true. The money was well spent. Uh, I'm curious how many people here went out and actually bought the gift cards and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Toys R Us. Because a lot of people bypass their parents, right? You'd go spend your birthday money or whatever and just get a card. Um, we had a lot of people do that. So we always assumed, we never knew if the card was actually bought as a gift or if the, the kid actually bought it. I know. Um, in Brazil, it was interesting. You'd go buy a piece of paper, so you could go to any um, like little corner store, like we call them in North America, the North American side, and you'd just hand them cash because they only had cash. They didn't have a visa system, and they'd print out a, they'd just write a number down on a piece of paper, and you'd walk back to Club Penguin and type in the number and unlock your membership. That was their currency system. UK, by the way, you guys were the first ones that could pay with the cell phone. Hmm. You guys were ahead of all the US side. You could actually SMS pay directly through. You could just, right on the screen, it said, text this number, and it was added to your phone bill. That's crazy. <laughs> there was actually one system you guys had. It was very clever. The treasure book with toys. Yes, um, that was a tricky... That was that was a strange system. Only items <laughs> that you could get by redeeming a code that you bought, you know, from a toy. And I think that was... Yes. Yeah. So that was actually a design. Um, originally, it was supposed to be the coin was the toy that you had, right? Right. So when you bought the toy, etc. But with the toy manufacturer partner and everything we got had going on, we actually didn't know what code was added to what toy. Hmm. So we just did a like a series. We knew the code number against a print run. So we would just show in our treasure thing saying, well, here are the things. And you chose to unlock. So it was an interesting side effect. Um, and I'm glad to hear people liked it. But our true goal was closer to Webkins where you typed in the number and you got that mm -hmm. creature, right? Yeah. But we weren't able to accomplish that. So would you consider maybe doing Because I know you did talk about toys not too long ago. Would you do something like a treasure book oh, system? I'm, I'm absolutely doing toys. Yes. So, because uh, I strongly believe that's actually the primary revenue channel. I would sooner have boxers completely free mm -hmm. and drive it entirely through um, third part, like a, a, another revenue stream. 
So if you're truly a collector, you just go buy more stuff. You just, you know, whatever you want. Right. Um, and like figurines, plush, whatever it could be. And um, that's, that's, I, I'm a big believer that games are actually replacing what used to be television and animated TV. Oh, yeah. I, I actually believe kids will be engaging in more games. And the game industry hasn't woken up to the fact that we should just take over the, the television, the toy the toy model that TV used to do, which is if, if any of you guys on the here have little kids that watch the Paw Patrol, that Paw Patrol machine is just like a money making printing machine of toys. <laughs> Every episode is like, here's a dog with a new car. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, if it all worked out, that would be a great system, you know, having everything free and then making all the money from the toys. And having some exclusive attachment to each toy, like items or something, giving incentive for people to go out and buy them. Um, mm -hmm. that'd, that'd be pretty Very good. Very much so. Very much so. Um, if you guys go to, I think it's videogamecharts.com, you can actually go look up how much money all the DS games made, which has includes Club Penguin's DS numbers and everything. Oh, wow. Um, you'll actually see that we outsold Zelda that year. Wow. I didn't even know so, that. so third party does work, and this is where Disney did a fantastic. I, I will always huge praise Disney. This is this is their machine, right? Mm -hmm. Their machine is take an intellectual property and make it enormous, which you everybody saw planet wide for Avengers, right? Yeah, they they know how to do that. They know how to make something absolutely huge to the way of pillowcases and sleeping bags, um, but as a lot of people are also talking about the feedback. Uh, as you see me talking to the audience, uh, sadly, the large corporation tends not to talk to anybody. So I think they lost their way because they didn't hear what you guys wanted anymore. Definitely not. I mean, it's, this is, it's awesome how you're doing this. You know, you're really listening and getting the community involved, seeing what they want, what they want. You know, um, you, you don't see that in really any game anymore at all. And that's what makes this <laughs> so unique is, which I think is really sad and I, I do want to thank everybody for your patience you are at the very very early phase there's lots of people I get DMs every day They're asking me about what the feature list is and this how will something will work and how the monetization works and how everything works I haven't even done it I haven't even written a note that's not where I'm at I'm at you're at the very beginning of how we actually make games and the very beginning was we start experimenting with prototypes we just start going, are we, we in the industry say, finding the fun. So all we're doing is find the fun. What is the thing that just makes you just delight and interested and you keep wanting to click, click it or play it? Then we add the layers. Well, how do you organize the fun? How do you connect your friends? How do you layer in all the systems that you need to make the community and the marketing and the promotions and the notifications and the save games and everything works. You bring that in after you find the fun. So right now, finding fun. So far, everybody likes the new room. So cool. We'll keep adding more rooms. You guys might have not liked it. You guys might have all written me and said, that sucks. I just want to live in the tavern forever. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop and I'll know it. You guys might all say it's great and everything right now, but uh, you'll see this. I'll see the stats. I'll watch how many people are actually picking which room and stuff. So that's how we do it. Um, and the new rooms are coming. Awesome. Yeah, we can't wait to see them. Now, the room's going <laughs> to be within this spaceship because you did share a picture on Twitter that showed that door open, with tubes going somewhere. <laughs> so yes uh, a lot of people are a little su very surprised by the spaceship showing up um so, so the spaceship was going to be my hidden room because i wanted to fully surprise everybody so it would actually be hidden hmm. the pirate village town and then really mess with your heads as you go down to the docks it was going to have a galleon in my notes has a galleon a little rowboat and by the way the starship is parked right there hovering huh the um because <laughs> they're all ships in my mind i was like i like the joke it's funny <laughs> the <laughs> ships spaceships pirate ships it doesn't matter i was just yeah. gonna put ship ships 
the because well, why why not? If you're gonna upgrade, you should start a rowboat and go all the way to a starship. I think it works. No. The <laughs> you just have a rocket attached to the freaking rowboat, and just launch into space. <laughs> So just a quick, I'm just going to finish up the car, the talk here. The the team I had for the Pirate Island is actually a lot of the Club Penguin guys that did a lot of the art. Sad, well, three three different one, groups of them. Uh, sadly, they've all been really busy. They all got new jobs because they got sadly laid off. Mm. What was it? Was that November or something? December was the layoffs, I think it was. Oh. So they've all been looking for new jobs. A lot of them have been rehired and stuff. So they've been working with me as a contractor, so that's just part time. Well, that's good. And but they haven't been able to get those projects done. They I asked them all, could they start in May? And I got all my emails back saying no, they cannot start in May. So I was like, ah Oh man. <laughs> Which is fine. I still want to work with those guys. They're they'd make a beautiful little island and I think it's a nice tribute to Club Penguin to actually have the Club Penguin team make an island. So I think that's kinda of fun. Oh no doubt, because I mean a lot of this community comes from Club Penguin. Um mm-hmm. no no doubt so, that it, yeah. So my other artist, Dan another Dan. This is I got too many Dans that I work with. <laughs> um He's been working with me forever. He's one of my character concept artist and uh, environment artist. So all the Epic Snails artwork, all the Mech Mice artwork, all the very technical. He loves robotic weapon stuff. Um, all his, his, his technical side. He's actually helping with Battle Bears as well. The So he's been working on these spaceship designs for me because he's a very technical artist. And I said, well... You're you're further along than the pirate artist, the pirate island artist. So let's get the spaceship going because I ne- can't pause the project. You guys already mentioned the call here. Um, you know it's getting boring. It's one place and you're only collecting items. I need to get more things going. So Dan was available. So this is why we got spaceships now. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> it's all it's all twists and turns, and uh, I love how it goes. And by the way, this is how Club Penguin works. The month before, going, I don't think we can get the party done. Oh, okay. What else could we do? <laughs> it's all part of the uh, experience. All part of the experience. All part of the experience. So the Pirate Island will be coming. I just have to get scheduling for this team to get working on it. They're telling me in the midsummer they're looking at getting working on it. It's a big project. Uh, that one actually involves my be. Well, it's quite a bit of work. It's an island with multiple rooms and buildings and ships and docks and everything. Um, so they're coming. The spaceship is its own enclosed thing. So it was going to be the special activity that you could do and work on this spaceship. So it's going to have, I think it's, I think I've got four different little spaces built for it. So it's going to be coming out really quick in the next couple of weeks. And then you guys will be seeing the, uh, kind of a mini game questing system. Uh, some people are asking about it, so it's more like if you guys are fans of Star Trek or anything, it's like a problem happens, solve it, because the ship always has problems, because that's every TV show out there. <laughs> and then you'll go through it. Uh, then we'll go back to the island, because we got to get the island, because we can't get to the sock monkeys, because that's the only ones I care about. I want to be a sock monkey. <laughs> I know some people want raccoons. <laughs> all right, thanks everybody for the comments. I am going to keep reading through them all. I'm sorry I can't just reach out and answer all of them yeah, right th- off the top. Thank you for the. We appreciate you doing this, taking some time out to do this today. This is awesome. We all appreciate it here. Um, yeah, th- this and is th- awesome. Thanks, Icy and Zook, and I don't remember who all the moderation team is. The list is way too long. <laughs> it's a pretty honestly. long list. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for helping organize this and chatting. Um, and people, don't stop. You can DM me or put it in Discord or wherever. Mm-hmm. Tell, uh, w- the, the industry and myself actually all want to know your story. You, you guys are rare. You, you were the kids that grew up with Club Penguin, and now we're asking you, what should, you, what should the next MMO, MMOs look like? It's not just me. Like I sit and I talk with Eve Online's team. I talk with... Um, the RuneScape guys are my buds. We we all talk. We're like, what is the next step? What are you guys looking hmm. for? Why why are you obsessed with Fortnite? How would that look in an MMO? 
what's of interest? And we all want to know, and you guys have that knowledge. So just write, write, you know, two, three paragraphs, share your thoughts, let us read it. Great. There you go. Oh, quick question <laughs> while I got you here. Okay. Red hard hat. Can you add that to the list? <laughs> I will add it to the list. All right. And, cool. a ye- and a yellow hard hat and an orange one and maybe a blue one. And they, I don't know. We they, light on the front. They would be and awesome. Should, <laughs> and this is, this is box career, so I have less rules than Disney did. And I think we should put the drink ones on the sides with the straws. Oh, I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> the NASCAR helmets or whatever they call them. I don't know what they are. Oh, those What's would the be beer, cool too. The beer drinking helmets. I don't know. Yo, oh, yes. Not, Soda drink hat. <laughs> so to drink hat or yeah i guess these guys are drinking orange juice i don't know whatever it is but <laughs> well we can't wait to see whatever you got okay and more flannels absolutely yes, yes we got, we got a... it tracy more yeah. flannels blue plaid and, shirt was uh, spotted oh yeah you guys stop sneaking around in there i gotta block that out one day <laughs> oh no there goes all, <laughs> all right, the fun <laughs> thanks everybody thank you lance all right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. All right, that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and um, thank you so much for those who participated. Uh, please join our Discord server, discord.me slash boxcritter, so you don't miss stuff like that. Uh, follow us on our social media, and follow us on our website. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and turn on a notification bell for each and every upload so you don't miss anything. Please check out our Teespring. Good night shirt goes away in just a few days, guys, on the 22nd. Get it now before it goes away forever. All right. Have a good day, everybody. We will see you next time. Peace out.